In that moment, I understood, of course I'm not worthy. I'm playing with the house's money. I've been playing with the house's money since this game began. From the moment I was born, I was standing on a, a mountain of gifts. Do you think we actually think we're funny? Like, isn't it more a reaction from other people? Because sometimes you talked about naivete with Phoebe. And, you know, sometimes when you see someone that's like that in real life, they don't realize that they're so funny. That's what's funny about it. That's true. AI doesn't know how funny it is, doesn't, doesn't realize, well, that's backward, actually. It's not funny. But sure, people are like that, and people will say, oh, you're so funny. Now, let's just, let's just imagine that you said those words to me when I was 25 years old. Oh, you're so funny. I would have had a couple of problems with it. One is I'd have trouble fitting it into my paradigm because I don't think of myself as funny. I mean, I do think of myself as funny, but not just funny. So I might feel like I'm, I'm achieving a low target, but that's not my big problem. My big problem is I have to fit your approval into my mindset. You just told me I'm funny, and now you're demanding that I feel how I feel about what you just told me. Because I'm creative and I'm insecure and I'm 25, I have a lot of trouble owning your validation. I have a lot of trouble feeling good about the approval you just gave me. I carry in my mind a construct that says I'm not worthy. And because I'm not worthy, I have trouble accepting praise. And also because I'm not worthy, I have trouble operating effectively in creative spaces. For myself, as a practitioner, I had a very clear moment of revelation where I learned the difference between fearing I'm not worthy and knowing I'm not worthy. And in that moment, my life changed. I'll tell you about it. It's a short story. I was struggling with my Hollywood career, but I was teaching effectively. And because I was teaching effectively, I got invited to go to Australia with some very heavy hitters from Hollywood who would provide the glamour and then I would provide the content. And at the first break, three young women came up to me, young adult women. And I remember them clearly because they had great Australian empowering names for girls. Their names were respectively Saturday, Sheridan, and Rebel. <laughs> okay. I thought, wow, you guys are doing your kids some favors here, giving them staunch names like that. But this is what they said to me. I, I, I remember it clear as day. I was standing on the left side of the auditorium on the steps and after the presentation. They said these words. They said, of all the presenters here today, we like you best. And I heard myself say the words, I'm not worthy. And I understood that to mean what they're telling me is they appreciate my gifts. And what I'm realizing in this moment is those are gifts. They were given to me. All this time I've been walking around the world saying, what if they find out I'm a fraud? What if they find out I'm not worthy? This is fearing I'm not worthy. In that moment, I understood, of course I'm not worthy. I'm playing with the house's money. I've been playing with the house's money since this game began. From the moment I was born, I was standing on a, a mountain of gifts. The gift of life, the gift of this brain, which is a good brain. And the body, meh. you know, can't shoot a basketball, can't hit a hockey puck, but I can tell a joke and I can think things through. That's a gift. That's, I developed it, I worked with it, I made it more. But in that moment, I, I understood. I spend all my time worrying I'm not worthy. They're gonna find out I'm a fraud and I'm never gonna feel good about myself. The minute I accept that I'm not worthy, that I'm standing on a platform of endowed gifts, I got nothing to lose. I'm already winning. I'm winning in a way that transcends what you might say to me that's positive or negative. And that's really when my, my best life began. And I'm sorry, you were how old at this point? I will have been just shy of 40, oh, not that young, interestingly. How did I get, it was 93 or 94 and I was born in 55. So yeah, just, just shy of 40. How did I get that deep into the game before catching on? I think I spent a lot of time distracting myself with outcomes that allowed me to advance but didn't allow me to explore. I spent five years as a singer songwriter, singing and playing guitar like Bob Dylan until I realized there were two things I couldn't do particularly well, sing and play guitar. I came to Hollywood and spent five years doing situation comedy with some degree of success, but not connecting with the, the environment, the ecosystem that I wanted to be in, not at home in that environment, and not, not willing to admit it. Once I discovered that I could teach meaningfully 
and inspirationally, then I, I, a lot of doors started to open because I was no longer rejecting that part of me that was my best part. I, I had some problems with it, as you might expect, because there's this old cliche, those who can't do, teach. And I was afraid at the age of 35, 30, 35, I was afraid if I turn my back on writing and just become a teacher, then I'm going to be one of those those who can't do teach guys. And though I'd already been teaching for 15 years in one form or another, teaching adults, I taught songwriting when I was learning songwriting. So I figured who better qualified to teach it than someone learning how to do it. Same thing when I came to Hollywood. I taught a class on breaking into Hollywood because I'm doing it. Let's give it a try. So I was a teacher all along, but I didn't accept myself as a teacher. I thought I was only valid as a practitioner. And then I had a student liberate me from that in, in about the same time. Student said, well, how about those who can do, do both? And I said, that's my path, because I know me. I'm not happy when I'm not writing, but I'm also not happy when I'm not teaching. So if I can spend half my time writing, that'll help my teaching. And if I can spend half my time teaching, that'll definitely help my writing. And I can move back and forth between these two worlds. That's my place. If I can accept that that's my place by letting go of earlier expectations, then I can start to operate effectively. I was afraid that I would stop writing, so I made sure I didn't stop writing. And two dozen books and countless teleplays and screenplays later, I can say, without fear of contradiction, I never stopped writing. I paused from time to time, but the fire never went out, and I never really needed to worry that it went, would go out. I just hadn't found the most effective version of myself. And the most effective version of myself is certainly he who can do teaches, he who can teach does. How fascinating. So it was a student that posed that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And this is why we teach, because when we teach, we learn. I mean, over and over again. I, so much of what I've shared with you today comes out of experiences that I've had in other classrooms elsewhere. And I've cited them as such. I told you about the time that I modeled failure by accident and got a, such a big reward. Part of what makes me effective is stockpiling discoveries. My, my keen attention to my own process gives me better effectiveness in subsequent situations, as, as that example. Uh, if you accept people's praise, then you only have to feel good, you don't have to feel bad. If you can't accept their praise because you don't think you're worthy of your pra their praise, you're just going to spend some time feeling bad. And who needs that? Okay, I learned that in that moment. So later in other places where people have wanted to guruize me, and they have, they've wanted to treat me as a guru, and I can live with that because I understand there's two kinds of gurus. There's the high guru who is above the people, and there's the low guru who basically drinks. And so I'm kind of a low guru. I'm with the people. We're all there together. I'm a practitioner just like you. So if somebody wants to say, I value you for what you know, now I'm in a place of real healthy tranquility where I can say I appreciate the value that you're giving me because I'm not dependent on it. See, the thing for me in Hollywood was, and even really up to this moment of revelation, I only felt good about myself when outer reality told me I was doing well, when I was validating, validating myself through the validation of others. The hard lesson that Hollywood taught me was Hollywood will extend validation to you and then take it away arbitrarily, suddenly, and for no particular reason other than they're no longer interested in you. So a lot of what I struggled with in that time was I'm not getting the validation that I need from outer reality, and I don't know how to get it from within. Once I learned how to get it from within, all of those problems stopped. How did I get it from within? Just by recognizing that I stand on a platform of gifts, and my only job is to exploit my gifts. If I do that, everything's going to fall into place. The questions of am I, am I good or bad? Am I achieving or not achieving? Am I high? Am I low? None of that matters. My only job is to be in my practice, to make creative choices and, and, and achieve creative outcomes, because that's what I'm intended to do with my gifts. Now, let's dwell on that for a second, because this is somebody who understands that his gifts include creating and teaching. But he also understands that they don't include negotiating, they don't include combat, they don't include excellence in sports, they don't include getting things from high shelves. So it's not just a matter of saying, wow, I'm so high and mighty, I have all these gifts. It's rather a matter of saying, this is who I am. And all of the qualities that I have, 
I can be in acceptance of, not because I can accept good qualities and bad qualities alike, but because I can see past the value judgment of good and bad. I can accept everything about myself, like everything else, as I've said before. It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just a thing that is. And if I have limitations, I use tools. If I can't reach a high shelf, I use a stool. If I can't draw a sunset, I use AI. Why wouldn't I? 